Yeah, August and Mono were incredibly strong at, at the tour last year. Um, I think that's kind of where maybe people thought Amiga Farm Quicks that weren't as strong. We were strong. It's just they were pretty exceptional. August Shimano last year and uh, and Marcel was as well and uh, and yeah, so so we strengthened things this year. We're we're excited to go and race, you know, and uh, sprinting's really hotly contested right now and uh, and yeah, I think it'll be good for the spectators and it'll be good for the sport this year. No, I'm you know, I'm I'm super happy that Amiga Farmer Quicks that put the financial investment and the, the commitment and the, the the confidence to to sign a team like around me, you know. The two best lead out guys in the world and the horsepower we have to do that, to put me in the best position to win, you know, it, it it's a nice position to be in, it's a lucky position to be in and uh, yeah, it makes me excited for, for going and racing this year. I think for the second year in my relatively short career, um, Tour de France is starting in the UK. It's something I couldn't have dreamed about as a kid, you know. Like I said when it was in London, it's probably the only chance I get to ride the Tour de France in the UK. Um, to have three stages this year, it, it, it makes me buzz. It gives me goosebumps, especially the first stage, finishing my mother's hometown in Harrogate. Um, I haven't ridden the road so much, but I know the finish really well. It's a road I walked up and down many times as a kid. We went there three, four times a year when, when I was young, you know. My family still live there, you know, and uh, providing a sprint finish is it's a perfect scenario, you know. Um, I'm, I'm super excited. That one day is, is obviously so, so important. I had a chance, the first chance in my career, to wear the yellow jersey last year. I missed out because of a crash, but... Uh, to have that that opportunity again, you know, it's the only Grand Tour leaders jersey I haven't worn yet. I've worn the pink jersey in the Giro and the red jersey at the Welt, and uh, to be able to do that in the Tour de France, the biggest race in the world, it, in the UK, is a big, big thing, you know. And then obviously the next stage, it's not like to be a sprint, but uh, the third stage into London, finishing on the wall. I remember last time when the Tour de France was in London, the, the crowds and cycle wasn't even popular then. Then you look at the Olympics and see how many people were there. I think. I don't think people realise how big it's going to be. It's going to be massive, and it, it gives me goops from talking about it. Really, really, am. I've never been so so excited about about one day of the year before in my life. So, just on something else, I was going to obviously ask you about. I have actually when we, when my daughter was born, but <laughs> <laughs> professionally, I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think organisers are just making races harder. They think making races hard. What what's happening? It, it, like I'm not going to beat around the bush. In the past, people were doping. Okay, so people were doing superhuman things. Now nobody's doping. Uh, maybe the odd, <laughs> but no, no, like you know, nobody's. So people can't do superhuman things. So the group is bigger, you know, and uh, so organisers saying we need to split the race up. We'll make it harder. Well. It, it, it's short sight because if the race is harder, there's less chance of people doing super So the the group stays bigger, even longer. You know, so technically it's making the opposite an adverse effect to what they they're wanting to do. Really, you know, and uh, it, it makes a new uh, like a neutral race. Um, I think yeah, there will be attacks in San Remo, but it makes it a different race. We already have Giro de Lombardia. You know. We don't need another one, I think. Uh, and it's not just because I'm not saying it on a bi bias point of view, oh, I don't get the opportunity to win. Like, I've only won it once, you know? It, it, and a lot of times I was quite a few minutes down, you know? It's not like I was always in with a shot of winning, so I wanted to carry on like that. Like, if I want to win, I really have to base my whole season around it. So it's not like I'm saying, oh, I back on win, they did it stupid. Like. How the race was was beautiful. It's, it, it's been like that since it started. They've added climbs in, but as the development of bikes have, co have, have come on and they've just added it to, to, to go with the times, you know, and to change, to completely alter the structure of the race, it's, you know, it's like sending Paris Roubaix down to the Alps. It, 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 it's not what the race is about.
I've got the rest of my life to to look back on what I have done. I think too many riders have won one or two big races and they look back on it, they live on it for a while and that only lasts a couple of years. And it's ended a lot of riders' careers, not ended but really dropped a load of riders' careers. Like, really guys still riding now, I see it, you know, they won one or two races and uh, lived on it a couple of years and they're suffering because of it, you know. And uh, I've never looked back on what I've done, even before I was cycling, you know, when I achieved something. I set a goal, I wanted to achieve it. The day after I I achieved it, I set a new goal, you know. That, that's always how I was and uh, it's how I continue to be, you know. Um, obviously, the, the reasons why I always wanted to be the best, that was it, you know. The reasons have changed now, like, I, I want to do well because I want my, my family to be proud of me. I want my daughter to grow up looking at her dad doing these things, like. So the motivations have changed, but, uh, I still want to win, you know, and uh, I still have, have, have goals of what I want to do and I won't look back on what I have done just yet.